Hello my CNC brother or sister, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, your CNC router bit supply company and I'd like to welcome you to this very special video. You know that I teach you the Vectric software from the beginning and I would like to offer you a behind the scenes look at the Vectric people. So I was at the AWFS show in July and there I met Vectric. They had a booth there and I got to talk to the people that we see on the videos and who are working behind the scenes. So I thought this would be a great time for you to know that there's actually people behind the software that you use and to get to know them a little bit and you're going to get a little bit of history of Vectric, how it got started and where they're going. So without further ado, let's just dive right into this little 15 minute interview. Kind of cool to get to know the people that are actually working on the stuff that you're working with. Let's go. IDCwoodcraft.com You know that I've teach, taught a lot of the Vectric stuff and I knew these guys were at the festival so, or at the show, so I had to show up and here they are. I get to meet these all, uh, these guys in person. We got Rebecca, we got Lewis. Lewis. I, I only just caught the name, so not <laughs> sunk in yet. We got Edward and... Uh, Adam and and the guy that's holding the camera is Todd, but Vectric, right? So, so this is the team that's dealing with you, selling you the product, teaching you. She's the one that's always making the videos for Vectric. And who, any software guys here? So you're a software guy, huh? So so let's talk about this. Like, yeah. So 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 how long have you been doing the software? I've been doing it for ten years now. Ten years. Yeah, ten years of the company. Okay. Vectric's been around for how long? Eight, we were already officially an adult because we were at our 18th birthday last year. Okay. So we're now officially grown ups for the first time. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's good. We did a little party. And so, so what do you do? Uh, I'm the managing director. So, managing uh, director. I, first, I was the first sort of hired developer that came into the team. Okay. So, uh, but our background before that, we worked in you know industrial CAD CAM in mold and dye working. Okay. And uh, so the founder of the company, Brian, who you may have met, I'm not sure, but uh, the story we always tell is kind of interesting because we, we were asked to make artistic kind of flourishes on the inside of, of steel mold dyes for blow mold to bottle okay. or for ejection molding. And so we worked on this product to take a 2D picture and make a 3D tool path very fast for this industrial uh, engine. So this so, is kind of the, the birth history of exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. And so at the, I mean, that worked out pretty well. So if you can imagine that you've got, uh, you know, uh, uh, some sort of um, grip for a drill or something, and they just want to put the company logo on it. Yeah, yeah. They were having to do that in solids and surfaces in a full-on CAD CAM package. It was really laborious and stuff. So. We worked on algorithms to take a picture, make the toolpath really fast. And that engineering company was very successful with it. We started to get inquiries from all these people, sign makers and oh. people. And you people see, okay, so, so, so this is the way business works. Yeah. When, 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 uh, the, when, you, when a demand starts to show itself. You know, so I teach CNC business all the time. Yeah. And you're looking to solve a problem or, or where the demand starts to pop in your face. I mean, that's like kind of a universal sign. You got to jump on it. So... That's, what, That's exactly, exactly what, what you're talking about. Well, we, our light bulb moment that you're yeah. describing was exactly this. We, we, were, we thought we had made what you might call the, um, the, the way for engineers to do the artistic bits. But what we realized was what we'd actually invented was a way for the artist to do what had previously been the engineering uh -huh. reserve, right? And that's really, our product is all about that. And hopefully you've seen this. Well, what a blend. What it, a way of It's a way of creative yeah. designers doing the things that used to be the thing engineers okay. you know, could only do. Right? And uh, yeah, that's the birth of the product. The engineering firm really struggled to find that market. And as you say, we took the opportunity in 2005 to spin off our own company and focus exactly on this, this artistic CAD CAM market and woodworking in particular. And, and, and the rest at, is history, is that? At, yeah, but at that level, at that time, it was uh, there wasn't a lot of machines in the hole. No, I mean this is the thing. We, we the 2005 turned out to be a sweet year, right? Because it was the year that uh, 3D printing really took off as, yeah. a, as a hobby, and there was the maker movement started in San Francisco, and the Make magazine was was going, and so we just hit this moment in time where technology this was is coming. such a cool story yeah so it's, technology it's, was coming down into the into the mainstream as it were yeah. and certainly for people who were normally there were not necessarily traditional woodworkers or from a wood shop or machines tool people they were coming from a different group and we just hit it yeah we hit that we hit that moment really nicely yeah. and the product as you say we just had to realize quite quickly 
the market found us. You know, we didn't find the market, but we realized that the market was emerging. Okay. And that woodworking in particular, which had not been our uh, original aim or background, That's... became the focus of our, our efforts. Okay. Although obviously the CNC machines don't care. You know, a lot of people are cutting Korean and acrylic and all that stuff. So did you like start to hire people that, that like skilled craftsmen and, and, and say, well, what do we so need to do? Or... Yeah, for the first couple of years, we just had, we had to, just create your, the product, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, we knew we weren't going to get paid really for the first couple of years. But then, as soon as it started to go, like I said, we were very lucky. We found some machine tool vendors who were really keen to partner with us. So we were very lucky in the early days that Shopbot came over, and they they were really keen. So there's a, in fact, at this show, this this uh, I think now ten or eleven people here at the show okay. who put our software in the box with their machine tool. Ah, so once we had a few of those people going on, you know, that, that really gave us the stability. Smart to build. marketing. Yes, yeah, start <laughs> built from there. Right. But now we sell about, uh, at least half of our software is sold direct. Yeah. So about half goes in the box with a machine tool somewhere. Okay. And about half direct off our internet so okay. website. Yeah. And we've, we're in about a hundred and something countries now. We've got more than 200 or 300 machine tool vendors who partner with us. Okay. Uh, yeah. And last time we looked, like I said, active customers wise, probably right. 75,000. Active okay. customers right now as we speak using the software. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. And before we get to you guys, yeah. uh, a, a couple of things about the Vectric software that I get asked all the time is, um, is when you buy it, is it yours? Yes, it's it's an outright sale and it's yours. And then uh, when you guys do a version upgrade, like yeah. uh, like right now you're on 11.5. So yeah. if you bought 11, 11.5 is, is part of your upgrade. You, you, you just get it. Yeah. But when you... Within a certain time, if you're going to upgrade, like when you upgrade to version yeah. 12, if you're like six months. I'll give you another little free heads up now. Okay. In the next couple of weeks, there'll be an 11.55 as well. And All right. Again, everyone who's on 11, they just get it. Okay. Know? And uh, it's so what, 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 and it's got what, real what's, in it. what's the secret enhancements on 11.55? So, well, I don't, we don't want to sort of, you know, go off too, <laughs> too early here. But what we've done in 11.55 in particular, actually, is, is some of the things that our uh, machine tool partners here have suggested. Okay. So it's a little focus around the sort of things that they notice as well. And we like to, um, yeah. you know, uh, spend a lot of time with them because they're real subject matter experts on the machine tools themselves. And so this is why these shows are for us. So it's a little bundle of things that they've asked for productivity enhancements and that sort of thing. But they're real features. They're real features. They're, these point releases, they're not just bug fix or whatever. They are real new features. The only yeah. the only constraint we have on ourselves is all of Becky and Todd's videos. Right. We can't break them all. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We have yeah. to be a little bit careful about user interface impacts. But apart Job from that, security. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, then we'll, but there'll be a major release then. I mean, the other thing I think is worth mentioning, that on this subscription issue, okay. I can feel like it's a trend. And, and I'm like everyone, I have Netflix and yeah. I have all that stuff. But I feel in those situations, you're consuming something from the vendor, right? Yeah. So the, the Netflix movie, I didn't make those movies. Right, right. So if I stop paying my subscription, I can't watch their movies. Uh -huh. But we kind of object to the idea that if you stop paying a sub subscription, you can't access your own files, right? And so yeah. at the moment, Vectric is pretty clear, I think, and the feedback we're getting from the show here is that, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel right for us that for a right. creative design product where you're creating the content, Hey, if you're finding this video kind of cool, getting to know the people behind Vectric, if you would take a minute and give me a thumbs up down below and maybe you'll leave a comment of something that you're learning about what Vectric is doing or that you're actually surprised that there's actually people that actually work on the software. Leave a comment. It always helps the channel anyway to grow. Let's get back to the interview. IDCwoodcraft.com subscription is, is right for us but we'll we'll, we'll see what the market yeah, dictates yeah, yeah. i might just be old right, right be yeah, yeah 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 i can yeah, see I, pretty I happy with it, but I, i'm yeah. not sure yeah. okay here's another thing that that kind of came out of this little talk number one you you you, you listen to your, your your vendors and say okay Very so we're going to add something so you always let the market tell you what they want most creators when they first get into creating stuff is a uh, little business advice by the way is um they make what they think is going to sell to the market. If you're starting a CNC business, first find your niche and then let the market tell you what they want. And, and you serve that need. Then you're going to do much better because otherwise you're, you're fighting. It. All right. Yeah. So, so uh, again, before we get on to you guys, obviously this is my, my uh, program of choice. It's what I've been teaching. And you know that I say just based on what he said they're adding more and more features it's already a lot of stuff in that program so you know kyle ely and i always recommend if you're going to get the training get get the training he's got it all laid out um 
I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But, <laughs> but um, so what do you guys got here? But we've got Lewis here. Yeah, so I'm the OEM business manager. So I, I'm the conjurer between the resellers and, and manufacturing themselves. So I'm new to the business and only started on Sunday. So you're, you're new? Yeah. I'm you're green. I'll tell you how new this how, is. How green is he? Well, listen, so uh, Lewis has done a remarkable thing, right? Because uh, when we hired him a, a month or so ago, I knew the show was coming up and this would be the perfect opportunity for him to meet so many people in such a short space of time. And now you're going to be a famous TV so star, a <laughs> YouTube star. He started on a Sunday. So I kind of passed you at the interview about a month ago in the corridor and said, hi, you know, but the next time he saw me was coming to my house before we went to Heathrow Airport okay. in London and came here for five days straight so, All right, brother. <laughs> that's, that's, this is what we would call that's, that's the way to break course. the cherry yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. all right let's talk to rebecca yeah. the girl that always makes the videos so, so how long have you been with vector 11 years yeah i'm gonna come over here yeah okay how long 11 years 11 years okay 11 long years so i started as an artist so i was doing a lot of like the 3d modern uh -huh. um and so i was doing that day in day out so I had a good kind of experience with the software. So I went down the training route. So yeah. now I do videos to teach everyone how to use. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. So so yeah. So she's the one who's always making the training videos. And uh, at the end of the day, you guys got some nice samples laid out here. Let's 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 come on over here and take a look at some of this stuff. So who's done the the making of all this stuff? Somebody get in here. Show me. <laughs> so this is stuff that you can do in the Vectric software, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. Right. So we got uh, this is a three. This is part. Of, you got that in your in your collection. Right? That's right. It's so a three D. I guess there's kind of two or three bits here. So the software starts with this sort of stuff, which we would call two and a half D carving. Right. So uh, where we're using the shape of the tool to make the the, the, the three dimensional shape. It's not true freedom because you, you are you are using the shape of the tool directly in the geometry. With this sort of model, we've got complete freedom. We use a, a tool with a very fine ball nose tip. Yeah, tip taper ball, ball nose. nose. And then you can raster it backwards and forwards, like stripe across it 3D. And the, the benefit of that is that you can make any shape, right? So uh, it's a little bit slower. It's, well, it's a lot slower. That's yeah, right. yeah, a lot slower. Yep. But you can then make any of these arbitrary okay. kind of three dimensional. Yeah, check check it out. Check it out. Yeah. This, this, is, this is serious. Yeah. Now, this is going to take a little bit deeper tool to yeah, get Yeah, but what's happened actually, in this case, it's very difficult to see, but um, because the material thickness is limiting, right, we can also take a 3D model, make it exactly at the height you want, but then slice it yeah. into, into pieces no thicker than the material. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is actually made of three is this sliced pieces that have been assembled after the fact. So in there somewhere, we can You've get got them hidden in there. There's yeah. one right there, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it. I think I can so, see the little, little layer on this side. So to, so to translate what he just said yeah. is... This is a 3D mount, th three different 3D models, or one whole 3D model has been sliced into pieces. So you carve three different pieces and then you glue it all together. That's right. And that's yeah. what this is. So when you want to do more intense projects like this, you have that capability yeah. in, in the software. And then, uh, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's all kind. This is a unique one now. That That's something I haven't gone to. So you're using a, what kind of toolpath this is? I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's 3D, but what's what's going on? You're working around a corner. Here. Yeah, so I mean, most, of, most, most of our toolpaths can be projected over a surface as well. So if you carve a surface or you have an accurate model of the surface, yeah. we can project our toolpaths over that surface. Now that I didn't know. But this is still three axis, this one. Is this uh, V-carve? Is this in the it uh, could. So if in the you, pro? So the difference between V-carve and Aspire, basically, is yeah. very simple. In V-carve, you could import models that have already been made, and you can machine a model that's come from an external source. But uh, Aspire allows you to build yeah, those models yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. So the artists who are producing these models, they're using Aspire. Now, this example is a little bit different. Yeah, this isn't actually using a rotary axis. Yeah. Okay. So here you've taken the, the same idea of our flats. Is the rotary model. function in the desktop, VCarb desktop? Or it's not uh, in desktop, I think. It's, it's in, in Pro. It's in Pro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's stop for a minute because I get this question all the time too. What's the difference between Cut2D, VCarb, and Aspire? So you're talking three different levels here. Okay. And so explain the Cut 2D first of all. So Cut 2D is, as the name suggests, 2D puppeting in profile. So it's just going to allow you to cut shapes out and cut to specific depths, usually on flat planes. Uh, and it's really, the idea of that is from people who are doing maybe nested base manufacturing cabinetry. So you drill holes and cut outs, dados, that sort of thing. Okay, but you can't do what we would call decorative carving. So that's what you call what? Decorative carving. So okay. fluting and things like that, where you're going to use, as we were described before, 
shape of the toilet. If you, that's yeah, where's one? Where's one? There you go. So this is the next step up. So then I followed your video yeah. then, by the way, <laughs> when I was learning the software. So for example, you know, the, this run here would just be a two D toolpath, and this run would be a two D toolpath. But here you can start to see we're using a, 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 a conical tool. And we're moving the tool in three dimensions to go in and out of the material in order to leave the exact correct uh, top surface outline. Yeah, so this is this is a V-carve. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to use V-bits on there. That's right. So. And so that's the next tier up. That's the, that's the name suggests. That's the V-carve level of the product range. Yep. And then as we've talked about before, if you want to start making 3D models and creating these yourself, so this is an example of something you can actually model in our Aspire Top End software, then you need that, that modeling, that three-dimensional modeling capability. But it's worth mentioning the VCOF software, will, like I said, will allow you to import models that are externally already made, and you can still raster a model that's already right. there. Um, but to actually create the models, you need that yep. as well. Yep. Okay, so let's let's just rehash that one real quick because I'm asked this all the time. VCarve desktop will let you carve in layers, but it won't let you do V carving or the decorative carving like you just so, showed. So, but so cut two D. Sorry, cut two D. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cut two D. And uh, so uh, yeah, there's there's another one there. This is this is a V carving. That's exactly right. That's right. Yeah, that, that's a V carving here. You get in close. You see that, that all the cool signs people make. That's V carving. Yeah. Right when they're doing wording, right? Uh, the V carve does that kind of stuff, and it's got a bunch of features in there that I'm still figuring out. You can import 3D models into the VCarve Pro de and desktop. That's right. But you can't create your own. Yeah. You need the Aspire version. Yeah. Now, here's the caveat. <laughs> if you don't know VCarve, don't buy Aspire until you get the VCarving, like the Pro done, and figure it out. Because you're talking, it's like stacking a, a, a knowledge layer on top of a knowledge layer, right? So then you get in, once you, once you got this figured out and you want to start designing your own stuff, then you go to the next one. Unless you've got some engineering background, you've already worked with 3D modeling, go for the Aspire. That's then you can make your own it's stuff. It's worth mentioning on that, because I think yeah. you're absolutely right. And we sometimes do downsell our own products in that sense, because if you don't need it, don't get it. I, I often have the analogy of the, one of those TV controllers with all the buttons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every button confuses you if you don't use it very much, right? And actually, there's, there is a, there's an impact of having a button you don't need. Yeah. But the, because we recognize that vector, you, we, if you want to upgrade later, having purchased the software, you only pay the difference. Yeah, that's one of the cool no things penalty, about what you guys do. No penalty. So if you buy Cut 2D and you need to have the V come on top, you can just pay the difference later. If you need the Spire after that, just pay yeah. the difference again. Yeah, so there's no, no downside. And All you're right. absolutely right. I would always recommend that people start simply. We Future proofing. I don't know. You know yep. It can really hammer your productivity. Yeah. Uh, uh, so wait to future proof when you know what the future is. <laughs> yep. yep. As, as you know, most people that get into this, they don't really know about CNC and the design. And they're looking, they're changing their whole path. Most yeah. of the people watch my channel are going into retirement, what have you. Yeah. And it's, it's like, what do I do now? And they pick that up. And it's yeah. like, oh my God, what the hell am I getting into? Right. But that's okay. You know, you're yeah. taking it, you're, you're jumping off a high dive. You don't see water down there, but, but, when you make the jump, I'm one of those ones that just just go for it, right? Yeah. Right. If you don't, you're gonna sit there. What am I gonna do with my life? And then you end up on yeah. No lines. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, that's it. Okay. This is the team. Come here. Uh, <laughs> a, a group hug and. Uh, Thank you guys for, for taking a minute to yep. say hi to the people who are watching my pleasure. channel. Give them all a wave. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was pretty cool. Getting to know the people behind the stuff that you work with and realizing there are actually people behind it. Hey, if you found this kind of fun, getting to know that there's people behind the stuff that you work with, then give me a thumbs up and maybe a comment down below. Something that you learned about with Vectric. It's always cool to just actually meet people that are working behind the scenes on the stuff that you're playing with. Hey, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, your CNC router bit supplier. And I hope you have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNCing. IDCWoodcraft.com